Let's work a series parallel problem. This particular problem was one that was used by a company to test their technicians before they could move on up to another level. So we're going to look at this and figure out a strategy for solving a problem like this. Um, the first thing we need to do is to identify the type of connections we have in the circuit. And by looking at this, it should be obvious if you've been paying attention to what series connections are and what uh, parallel connections are, that we really have in this particular circuit uh, four parallel connections that we have to deal with. One of the parallel connections is a little bit more complex because it consists of two sets of resistors in series and the whole these two sets of resistors are also in parallel. Um, so we've got to reduce those down to a single resistor on each side being in parallel and then use the parallel formula to solve for equivalent resistance. One way to attack the problem, or the, actually the easiest way to attack the problem, is to first find the equivalent resistance. It's really the, the only way we can do this. We can use other methods, uh, nodal analysis um, or mesh analysis, but uh, totally unnecessary here. So the first thing I would attack is R2 and R3. It's very obvious that R2 and R3 are in parallel. How do we know this? Well, anytime you have two components hooked together with wire on both ends of the components, hooked together with a conductor, so that one end of one component is hooked to an end on the other component, and the opposite ends of those components are also hooked together with conductors, then these components are considered in parallel. So R2 and R3 form a parallel combination. Let's use the parallel formula to find the equivalent resistance for R2 and R3. Um, and we can do this either by using fractions or we can do it by just using the calculator. So if I plug in a quarter, I'm going to take a R2 first, take a 4 the reciprocal, and we're going to add that to 6 reciprocal, hit equal, and that gives me 0.4166 repeating. Take the reciprocal of that and I end up with 2.4. So the equivalent of resistance of the 4 and the 6 ohm resistor is 2.4 ohms. And let's write that down. The next pair of resistors we have to find the equivalent resistance for is R4 and R5. Now you could use the formula for this, the parallel formula, which is the, the fact that uh, R equivalent equals 1 over 1 over R4 plus 1 over R5. You could use that, but one very simple way to solve this one is to notice that both R4 and R5 had the same resistance. This means that their equivalent resistance is half of each component, which is 3. Now, even if we use the other formula, though, if you don't believe this, then go ahead and plug it in. So we got 6, 1 over x, plus 6, 1 over x, equals 0.3333 repeating. Take the reciprocal of that, and we get 3. So we've now solved the equivalent resistance for the equivalent resistance of two sets of resistors, R3, R2 and R3, R4 and R5. And what we're doing is we're working towards a series circuit that will give us what the equivalent resistance is for the whole circuit. Because our goal right now is to find the current in the system. Once we find the current, we have a great advantage because R1, R6, R7, and R12 are all in series with the battery and these other parallel circuits. And each of those resistors is going to experience the full current coming from the battery. So once we find the current, we can immediately find the voltage across R1, 
R6, R7, and R12. It'll just be simple Ohm's law problem. Current times the resistance for each one of those. When we find the equivalent resistance for the other parallel combinations, we use the same method using the current that we found multiplied by each equivalent resistance to find the voltage across those particular components. So the next thing we're going to do now is move on down to R13 and R14. They're a simple, a simple combination to solve for. So in that particular case, we have a 6 ohm resistor in parallel with a 9 ohm resistor. So we can say that uh, 6, 1 over x plus 9, 1 over x equals 0.2777 repeating. Take the reciprocal of that and we get 3.6 ohms. So we've now found the equivalent resistance for three sets of parallel resistors in our circuit. The last one we're going to solve is a little bit more complex because even though we have a parallel circuit here, this parallel circuit consists of four resistors. So to solve for the, the equivalent resistance for this, the first thing we're going to have to do is add the two resistors on one side, and let's just pick R8 and R10. We're going to add those together because they're in series, and that gives us an equivalent resistance of 10 ohms. So 6 ohms plus 4 ohms is 10 ohms, so the equivalent resistance for those two is 10. Looking at the other side, we have R9 and R11. R9 is 5 ohms. R11 is 5 ohms, so the equivalent resistance for those two in series is also 10 ohms. So we'll mark that as being 10 ohms. The equivalent resistance for the whole circuit, that whole combination of R8, R9, R10, and R11, is simply going to be each side, the resistance of each side, put into our parallel formula. And the nice thing about this particular part of the circuit is that the, those two sides of that parallel circuit are each 10 ohms. So going back to what I stated earlier, that if you have two components that have the same value and they're in parallel, the equivalent resistance is half of, the to of each one. So there we have 10 in parallel with 10, so the equivalent resistance is 5 ohms. Now that we have all these equivalent resistances, we could redraw the circuit to include just a bunch of resistors in series. And so it, when we get done doing this, we would have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight resistors left in this series circuit that we have left when we get done doing this. Once we found our equivalent resistance, we can now just use Ohm's law to find out what the current is through this circuit. So if we find, if we add up all our resistances together, we end up with 36 ohms. Um, we have 2 ohms plus 2.4 ohms plus 3 ohms plus 6 ohms plus 8 ohms plus 5 ohms plus 6 ohms for R12 and 3.6 ohms for R13 and R14. And so our equivalent resistance is 36 ohms. So to find our current, we just take our battery voltage, 54 volts, divided by the total resistance for the circuit, which is 36 ohms, and we come up with 1.5 amps. Now that we know the current, we can go through and immediately find the currents through each of the resistors by themselves, R1, R6, R7, and R12, by just taking that current and multiplying it by those resistances. So, for instance, in the case for R1, we have 1.5 amps times 2 ohms, and that gives us 3 volts. For R6, we have 1.5 amps times 6 ohms, 
which gives us 9 volts. Um, for R7, we have 8 ohms times 1.5 amps, which gives us 12 volts. And for R12, we have 1.5 amps times 6 ohms, which is 9 volts. These voltages are important to find because little by little, we're chipping away to find out all the voltages are in the circuit. So we go back to the R2, R3 combination. We found out that the equivalent resistance for that was 2.4 ohms. So 2.4 ohms times 1.5 amps gives us 3.6 volts. The equivalent resistance for R4 and R5 was 3 ohms. So 1.5 amps times 3 ohms is 4.5 volts. For R8, R10, R9, R10, R11, we said the equivalent resistance was 5 ohms, so the voltage across that whole part of the circuit is going to be 5 ohms times 1.5 amps, which is 7.5 volts. And then finally, R13 and R14 form a combination with an equivalent resistance of 3.6 ohms, so 3.6 ohms times 1.5 amps is 5.4 volts. So we've now found all the voltages across all these different segments of the circuit. The way to test to see if we've got the right answer or that we're on the right track is to add up all these voltages and they should add up to the battery voltage. So if we take 3 volts plus 3.6 volts plus 4.5 volts plus 9 volts plus 12 volts plus 7.5 volts plus 9 volts plus 5.4 volts we do come up with 54 volts so Kirchhoff's voltage law is telling us that what we've done so far um, is right or it could be a big coincidence that it turned out that way but chances are it means we've done the problem right. Um, now, things get a little bit more complex, maybe, because we want to find the currents through, for instance, R2 and R3. And to do this, we just basically use the voltage across the component divided by the value of the component. So to find the current through R2, it's simply 3.6 volts divided by 4 ohms will give us the current through that component. And the same is true for R3. 3.6 volts divided by 6 ohms will give us the current through that component. Now the check here is those two currents that you've come up with ought to equal 1.5 amps because that 1.5 amps entering that particular node going to R2 and R3 should split up in a way so that the total current is equal to the current coming into the node. Now we get to the next set of components, the same thing is true. Uh, we should have 4.5 volts divided by 6 ohms will give us the current through R4. 4.5 divided by 6 ohms again will give us the current through R5. And those two currents in this particular case should be equal but add up to 1.5 amps because those two resistors have the same value. Notice too that whenever we have a resistor in a circuit like this, the highest current will always flow through the lowest value, the lowest resistance value, and that's only natural. That component is providing a lower resistance than the other component, so it, you'd expect more current through it. Now let's move on to um, down at uh, R8, R9, R10, and 11. Here we have the same situation. We have um, we have 10 ohms on one side. R8 plus R10 gives us 10 ohms. So our voltage across those two resistors is 7.5 volts. So 7.5 volts divided by 10 ohms should give us the current through R8 and R10. And the same is true for the other side, R9 and R11. Uh, 7.5 volts divided by 10 ohms because the total resistance on that side is 10 ohms. Um, should give us um, the current through R9 and R11, and, and that current should be the same since those components are in series. 
um, looking at uh, the last set of parallel resistors, R13 and R14, we know that our voltage there is 5.4 volts. So 5.4 divided by 6 ohms should give us the current through R13, and 5.4 divided by 9 ohms should give us the current through R14.